I, Pili Legani Pemba, solemnly swear that this video is going to be less than 30 minutes. I promise, I promise. Hi everyone, my name is Opili Legarin Pemba and welcome to yet another episode of The Construct. I'm glad to have you back. For my returning people, we are here, we are pushing, we are moving and for you that is new, um, this is a construction channel where we kind of just dissect the construction market from a different perspective um, to kind of get you thinking and navigating yourself better within the built environment. So, gosh. Today, I want us to tackle in supply. I've realized that a lot of people, in terms of just the questions that I get, um, I know that I've done an admin basics video before, and I realized that um, a lot of people, in terms of just my DMs and my interactions, is that, yes, you guys get what the admin basics are, but how is it that you actually navigate yourself um, as a supplier and okay before we get into the first question the the one thing that I just want just to kind of just round in terms of just the admin is you have to package yourself correctly so that means that you are registered in the CIPC your company is registered that means that you are in the your CSD you are you have your BE certificates you have your tax clearance so and you have your company profile like you have like your basic admin like you like in order to just you know like the first day you birthed your business that's literally what should be coming out like the basics you know like you can't be operating without like a tax clearance uh banking details being part of this uh, central um supply database being um registered as a company having a uh, uh, tax clearance and your your invoice and, and all of that and your BE and all of that so that's just the, the just the basics and obviously if you want to dive in a little bit more on that I do have a video on just admin basics of it but now we're moving on to the next step which is what I feel like these questions these I, I wanted to do these questions because I wanted to answer that so the first question would be so I'm going into this supply business which materials um, and how should I supply it um, I think more than anything, I think the first thing that you need to to be before you even decide that you are supplying, you need to treat your supply business as a company. Like this thing of us guys in construction, just thinking of construction as construction and not thinking about construction as a business is just something totally different. And us using ways of Abantu that used to navigate construction 10 years ago when they were entering the game and um, and, and using those strategies to kind of just create relationships in this industry is actually, it's, it's actually getting a bit old. This thing of you thinking that you're going to navigate this business by having a person on the side and all of that. Yeah, it does happen and it does work for some people, but it doesn't work for all of us. So that means that there should be a clear, one clear, concise way of how you kind of move within the business. So think about construction as a business. Now you're going into the business. You can't just go into the business saying that you want the, the outcome. You know that you want to be a supplier, but in order for you to supply something, there has to have been some sort of a gap. So as you are entering the market, what gaps have you identified that you feel like you as a supplier would be able to bridge? I understand that with government, um, doing business with the government, you can't really um, just concentrate on one product. But in order for you, in order for you to take it a step further, you kind of have to invest in the product that you are um, supplying because now we are going to take it back. We're going to take it back. But obviously... As you are going into uh, into construction, think about it the way that Uko just buy and vase. Like, like we literally saw her build her business, like live on Instagram. Like, like we all saw her. Like, I don't understand people that, that don't credit it, girl, brah, that don't credit her in terms of just like, like what she's done, like in, on, on social media for her business and just the way that she's moved. The one thing that you've realized with Umbali is that she's been consistent and she's literally not selling the same thing that she did two, three years ago. So it also you, you need to invest in something in order for it to grow and when you invest then grow that so that's just the way that business works that invest then you grow it, it it depends it depends on one what's your entry strategy depending on what is happening in the market so let's say for instance you want to do a you want to supply bricks right so you will go back and think about cool how many brick manufacturers are there 
um, how price sensitive they are, um, um, what 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 kind of uh, what what kind of challenges are they kind of, of of exposed to and are going through right now? In order for you to kind of trail back and see where you're going to make that profit or margin, because it also depends on okay, sharp. So if the if if the market in terms of like the brick market. If the brick market right now is going through, you know, like uh, is going through raw material shortage. So that would mean that 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 will affect the way that that market moves and it will affect the way affect your profitability within that time. So when you think about that market, then think about the times that it's in. What type of market is it? The competitiveness. Um, how willing are people to stretch the price for you in order for you to be able to create that profit or margin that you want for yourself but also what i always say for this is that in as much that in, in as much as you are looking into construction and into the manufacturing because right now you are just acting as an agent you are just you are a middleman and you are you are taking something there and you you're putting it there that's the first phase I don't want you to stay there. I think I think most of us stay there and we think that we just, you know, manufacturers have their problem, uh, their selling is, is their problem. All I am is just kind of just bringing them together. That's not what we do here. We, we supply, yes, the first stage. We, we kind of progress into the different stages. The first stage is you actually taking and putting it there, but um, you also need to kind of invest in it. And with investing means that you have to literally have ROI on your forehead because when people are investing in relationships with you they also want a return on their investment so if you're going to be if you're going okay first of all you look into yourself what exactly are my strong points as a supplier and it's not just you know how like people always say like no not people like just not the market and just just life and just literally everything price is king but also price is also a, a, a variable of a lot of things that affect you know that affect price so it also depends on what your strong point is it could be that your strong point is is in transport so that's where you cut most of the cost uh yes you get it at a certain price and you're not really getting the best prices right now but you can see that you can cut you can cut within within your transport which makes it a little bit less which gets you a better a better profit or margin or you've got stronger relationships which gets you a better price from inception from the manufacturer so find out like within the supply chain where is your strong point um and where is it that you are going to be able to milk the best because the price is not just the price is not just what you are getting the materials for you know like the price is also all the other variables that will take you getting your product to your intended customer so you can cut cost so in so many other places in order to increase your margin while you are still working at better getting a better better pricing structure with your manufacturer at that stage and obviously as you grow that those relationships they see the value because with manufacturers and people and and and, and people that you're going to be getting the stuff from or the sellers um it's 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 also in the value because at the end of the day they want you to be selling their product so if so yes we are going to be going into government projects and all of that and i i totally recommend that but we're also going to be building within the supplying businesses another thing is there are a lot of people that i've just realized that they say they have a lot of supply businesses that are not doing anything like if you are doing supply guys you are not just dealing with the government you are also dealing with private people and that would mean that your value has to be constantly interpreted and you constantly have to be at the doorstep of these people. 100% of the business is normally gotten by 20% of the supplies because one, those relations were established, those, you know, the value is already interpreted and communicated and negotiated, you know, so you need to, when, when you think about the way that you're going into supply, don't think about it just from um, uh, doing business with the government. Also thinking of, uh, think about understanding what you are doing understanding that the product and changing that product to a brand so um thank you for coming on to this channel i hope that you subscribe i hope that you you watch um, my previous videos on the construction interchange and here on the construct construction interchange is a bit more of just conversations around people that are actually working within the built environment and the construct here is more just 
um, dissecting and how to on just to do certain things within the built environment.